Gate to Gate 3 for boarding. The flight number's underneath and it's not on there. Still evacuate, please. They're all fighting over the mini egg. <laughs> it's the start of 2014 and a busy year ahead. Cardiff Airport is about to undergo a major transformation. It'll be spending the next year modernising its operation. They're updating the terminal buildings. You obviously ate all the pizza. <laughs> developing new routes and inviting their new owners to inspect the upgrade work. It makes a big difference in terms of people's perceptions. At the airport, normal operations must continue. There are sports teams to welcome. The fans that follow them. It's even better. Major events to plan for and scheduled flights to welcome. We've got everybody on board, so now we're ready for our uh, nice flight to Cardiff. Filmed over nine months and with access all areas, this is the story of the airport. Coming up, there's a long night ahead for the runway repair team as they battle to get the job done before the first of the morning departures. There's an aircraft coming in, so we're all going to have to move out of the way now. With hundreds of acres of grass to keep trim, not everything goes to plan. Looks like there's a puncher on the wagon. And hundreds arrive at the terminal building, all looking for a holiday bargain. There's no business like show oh, to dear. It's a cold March night, and the last of the evening flights are waiting to depart. Inside the terminal, it's a hive of activity as builders prepare for one of the most challenging jobs of the airport's ongoing programme of improvements. They've got eight hours to dismantle the main security hall and move it to its new location. In charge of keeping everything on time is project manager Bob Hammercott. We'll have a lot of contractors on site, a lot of movement, a lot of heavy work going on. Um, as I say, it could get a bit fractious, but uh, we hope for the best, as I say. Chief of Staff Jason Thomas is also on site to help deal with any problems that may arise. The plan tonight is to bring in a second X-ray machine to extend the hoarding line, to create a temporary search facility to get everything cleaned, spick and span, and then we get security coming in right at the last stage, give it one sweep to make sure everything's all right, compliant, and then we go live first thing in the morning. The one thing that's for certain, the airport has to hope open and we get passengers through from 4.30. So, as I say, game on. With the builders swinging into action, there's an immediate problem as a cancelled flight leaves passengers stranded next to the security hall. The flight's been cancelled to Edinburgh, yeah, so uh, we're waiting on a coach to take us up to Birmingham, stay there tonight and catch a flight back tomorrow morning, so, yeah, it's been a bit of a nightmare. If you do the fly out at 6 o'clock, your flight's cancelled. The last thing you want as well is to be in a building site. But it's just one of those necessary things you've got to do to make a place better, you know? So uh, people have been very tolerant so far. It's a distraction they could have done without, but work must go on. Well, it's quite a big job, good few guys in. So tight couple of hours in front of us, I think. Cardiff Airport has a runway 7,700 feet in length. Even the world's largest passenger plane, the A380, can land and take off here. But like all airfields, its runway and taxiways are susceptible to the harsh winter weather and must be continually maintained. It's what we call overbanding. Over time, the pavement cracks in this small hairline cracks both longitudinal and latitudinal. And these guys are going to go around with bitumen and basically cover these cracks up. You can see from these cracks here, these are caused by the continual wear of the heavy moving aircraft. If we didn't do anything at all, they'd open up even more and more, especially when we get cold weather. I think we'll probably end up doing something like 18, 19,000 metres on a taxiway alone and another 25,000 metres on the runway. Throughout the night, the airfield has to remain open. For head of airfield operations, Russell Clements, it means he must ensure everyone knows exactly what's going on. So now I'm going to talk to air traffic now, tell them what we're up to, and then hopefully we'll get out there then. Right. We're blocking off an area with glims. Air traffic are aware that their area is, is not for aircraft movements, and they'll move aircraft around that work that's taking place tonight. The 
The team have to measure every inch of every tarmac repair to ensure there's an accurate record of the work that's carried out. By the time morning comes, they will have filled over two miles of damaged tarmac. At the other end of the airfield, a separate team are carrying out maintenance to some of the many aircraft approach lights that are located at either end of the runway. They're maintained regular, though they're checked to tell the angle of elevation's correct. That's pretty good at that. The actual changing of the physical unit would probably be every 10 to 15 years, maybe. The approach lights provide guidance information, helping pilots align the aircraft with the runway as they approach the airport and are an essential visual aid. There's an aircraft coming in, it's actually about 25 minutes early, so we're all going to have to move out of the way now to let that aircraft land. But fortunately, I think the guys were packing up anyway, so it's just, uh, just got it done in time. With the aircraft safely on the ground, and no more flights due for several hours, the repair team are able to push on and get the job finished. I believe so, finished completely. One uh, AT backtrack. It's late in the night, but everything's gone well, and the lads have done a great job. So we're hoping that we'll get another couple of years where before we have to start doing this process again. It's an ongoing thing. We've got a 2,300 metres of runway and the same amount of taxiway. So there's always some work to do to try and prolong the life of the pavement. Back in the security area, the stranded passengers have finally got on their way and work is progressing fast. Come on, boys. One of the critical jobs is to safely relocate the X-ray scanners. Without these working properly, passengers will not be able to check in in the morning. The movement of the scanner reveals a lot of mess, but in amongst it are one or two hidden treasures. 22p and a mini egg. They're all fighting over the mini egg. So, gotta watch my diet, I love the 22p. <laughs> Next to move are the archway metal detectors, and it's vital they're in precisely the right position. We need disabled people to come through with enough clearance in their wheelchairs, so this, this space is, is critical for us, really. Look at that. What's it? 1.2. <laughs> well done, Bob. Well corralled. The arrival of late-night pizzas provides a welcome break for most, but Bob's not being tempted. I've got to watch my figure, so maybe not for me. <laughs> Moments later, though, he's caught red-handed. <laughs> I've worked it off tonight. <laughs> Nervous energy. Yeah, we like a bit of pizza. Head of Security Operations, Kerry Mashlin, is taking charge of the critical final few hours. Cleaning stage, so um, all hands to the deck, really, and just hoovering, cleaning. We're getting to the stage now where we're comfortable that we're all going to be ready for the morning operations. Excuse me, Anne. <laughs> all of you clean carpet. <laughs> With the clean-up operation in full swing, even Chief of Staff Jason is mucking in. I thought rather than standing there watching everybody get in there. And in. <laughs> this is what you call dedication. <laughs> Taking the tie off, <laughs> still got the shirt on. Exactly. Very impressed. <laughs> His wife is very lucky. <laughs> With the cleaning almost complete, there's just a small matter of arranging the barriers. But Jason's taking it very seriously. So we need us to come back a bit, yeah? This is just Jason Witt. I just like them to be nice and neat. So that's 1.35 gap, so we'll keep that all the way through. And it has to be for Jason perfectly in line, not a centimetre either side? Correct. By three in the morning, it'll all be closed off nice and neat, and customers will come in and use this as if it's always been here, you know? So it's uh, really pleased, actually. And the staff that went off shift at 2 o'clock, coming back in the morning to a brilliant new space. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be kind of the wow factor, I think, for a lot of people. 
With the works now advancing quickly, Airport Chief Executive John Horn is preparing to welcome the First Minister to the airport to inspect progress. First Minister, good afternoon. Good to see you. Welcome to the airport. With the airport now owned by the Welsh Government, John is keen to show off the planned improvements to the exterior of the terminal. And that essentially is going on the lift shaft there. Yeah. We'll say Cardiff Airport. We'll make it look loved. You know, in a yeah. way that it wasn't for, for, for such a long time, it just looked run down and it makes a big difference in terms of people's perceptions. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Inside, the First Minister is shown some of the building works and, of course, the newly completed security hall. Yeah. When we open up phase two, yeah. all the scans will be done in that area. Right. The visits are flying when, and with press interviews still to do, it's a tight schedule. Passenger numbers rising, uh, more flights as well. There was a lot to fit in to the hour we had, so I think we've done it. Um, as long as I finish this video now, and then he's got time for a little bit of private downtime before he gets on the plane, I think we'll, it'll be mission accomplished. Yeah. No such luck for the First Minister. With the hour up, he must hurry to the departure gate to catch a flight to Anglesey. Here we are, sir. All right, thank, thank you. you. Here we are, First Minister. Sure. Okay. Thanks very much indeed. No problem at all. See you Good. again soon. See you soon. At Cardiff Airport, Margaret James is responsible for customer service, and she's on a mission to drive up standards. <laughs> At special training sessions, Margaret has been briefing her staff on the importance of putting the customer first. And now she's got a plan to see if the information has sunk in and reward those with the biggest smiles. If I see smiling faces, if I see somebody using a customer's name, it all adds to that customer experience. So I've just got a whack of raffle tickets with me, and what I'll be doing is just handing them out and rewarding, and then each week I do a raffle. As Margaret prowls the terminal building, it's not long before she spots her first ticket winner. I've just seen the biggest smile from one of my agents, so... Very much. It's just an instant reward, and I think it's nice to be recognised that you're actually doing your job, and you're doing your job very well. Very well done for that, and you've got some raffle tickets for the raffle. <laughs> Excellent. Look at the smiles that are coming out. Be a raffle ticket for good service. Airport operations assistant Christina Retta has been on duty since 4 a.m. So, should I have been here this morning rewarding somebody with raffle tickets? To be honest, you would have given out a lot of raffle tickets, Mark, I know. because, you know, it's just <laughs> such a fantastic team. <laughs> I think it's good, like, team building between departments and things. And, hey, who doesn't love a bottle of wine? Happy <laughs> days. I'll see you at the boarding. With smiles flowing in check-in, Margaret heads upstairs to departures. As you can see, she's ploughing away there diligently and she's smiling away. <laughs> I'm just going to give you this for excellent customer service that you've been doing. Thank you very much. smiling faces, yeah, but they're smiling and laughing, and it's good to see, so well done. It's good news for Margaret, as all the raffle tickets are gone, and now she's the one with a smile on her face. We've basically covered the journey from check-in right through now to I'm about to get on the plane, and all the staff have been behaving, you know, really well. Everything I've asked for, actually, in the coaching, and uh, it's just a testament to their commitment to us all, so, yeah, I'm delighted. Cardiff Airport occupies a vast site, with over 300 acres of it covered by grass. Each spring, a huge operation takes place, known as bottoming out, to cut and remove as much of the grass as possible. This is the type of stuff we're trying to remove. All the stuff that voles and small mammals will use the nesting and cover, and then we'll have birds coming in to try and feed on those, those mammals. Birds are a major problem for all airports and a big threat to flight safety. Bird strikes happen most often during takeoff or landing and can cause significant damage to aircraft engines. They've been the cause of a number of accidents around the world. It's all about managing habitat for bird control, deterring birds from coming in. 
Aerodrome Environment Officer Richard Bailey will be leading the team as they cut right up to the edge of the runway, which will remain live at all times. It's slightly different to what you're used to working out on farms. Their grass is very precious. Aircraft are very precious to us, <laughs> and that's, that's what we're here for. So don't worry if we get called off, if we're told to move, and you have to go through the grass, drive through it. And that's why you need to listen so that you're aware of what's going on. Situational awareness is really, really important. Tower Ops 2, uh, just for information, um, we will be beginning grass cutting operations in the maintenance area south side this morning. Ops 2, roger that, I'll copy, thank you. Thanks. But as cutting gets underway, the machinery is struggling. It seems the recent poor weather has left the grass far wetter than thought. It's, it's rain water, it's the moisture coming out of the grass. That's quite bad, that's not what we'd like to see. That's, again, in an ideal world, we, we'd like not to be doing this job at the moment. Hopefully the sun is out now and it will improve and by this afternoon we won't be seeing that. As the weather improves, there's another much bigger issue. Take your time, Steve, I think you've got a puncture. It's leaking around the valve, are they tubeless? The good side is that grass is extremely wet, extremely heavy. This gives us drying time. <laughs> Hopefully we can keep moving until the tyre fitter arrives. If it doesn't work, then we've got to stop. Cardiff Airport is undergoing a big period of change. And for the first time in many years, passenger numbers are now rising. Today, the airport is sprucing itself up as it prepares to transform itself into the venue for a big travel show. It's really about showcasing everything you can do from Cardiff, so showing all the different destinations and all the different types of holidays. Cassie Houghton from the marketing team has her work cut out, ensuring the check-in hall is ready to welcome dozens of tour operators and airlines and hundreds of would-be holiday makers. There's a load of stuff in the corner. Oh, man! We've got to get the table set up. We've got to get um, all the exhibitors in and all their sort of stands prepared. The guys, actually, with the trolley have got all the brochures. Yeah, I've come to that now. Let's have my coffee. I haven't had my coffee yet. Hopefully, by about 10.30, we'll be done and ready to ready to get everything on the way. <laughs> we think there's going to be about 500 people, from what I've seen so far, at least 500. <laughs> all seems to be going well until there's an issue with the internet. We need internet so that people who do want to book holidays or flights today can do so. So we need that internet connection to enable them to do that. Don't, no, let me just try okay. first of If all. you try again, if not, just uh, let me take the box out. With concern mounting, Cassie makes an urgent phone call for help. Sorry to ring you early on a Sunday morning, but we're having issues uh, logging onto the internet for the holiday market. I can't do anything. It won't allow me to do anything on there. I'm sure we'll get it resolved. We've got an hour and 45 minutes until passengers start arriving, so I think we'll do everything we can to get it sorted. All right, OK. He said, turn it off and put it back on. That should help. <laughs> so we'll try that now. Right, that's working. Looks like we're working, Cassie. Yeah? Yeah. Marvellous. Great news. With the stall holders all online, final preparations can be made before the doors are thrown open to the waiting public. Big relief, big relief, stress free. <laughs> On the airport's south side, the grass cutting team is still trying to deal with a punctured tyre that's completely stopped their operation. It's not holding air at the moment. It's not ideal, but as I say, you can't help that with machinery. It's, uh, it's the nature of the beast. Obviously nothing we can do at the moment. No, no, the tyre's, the tyre's not going to take it. No. So really efficient use of our time now. <laughs> we'll make the most and feed ourselves. <laughs> the neighbouring flying club, which is housed in the original 1960s Cambrian Airways headquarters, is renowned for its hearty breakfasts. And the team don't need any persuasion to pause for food. I'd like a puncher every day. <laughs> <laughs> An hour later, with breakfast finished, the tyre fitter has finally arrived on site. <laughs> the 
with the inner tube being blamed for the problem, a quick solution is found. And with the sun now rapidly drying the wet grass out, it's full steam ahead for the cutting team. Well, we'll give it another go now and hopefully we'll have a good afternoon on it and we'll make some progress. I'd like to think that is the only stop we're going to have before it gets dark tonight. Probably won't work like that, but that's, you know, to be optimistic, that's the intention. Uh, we'll be going until uh, all the birds have been cleared before it gets dark and then uh, we can go home and tomorrow's another day. At the airport's travel show, the morning's problems are now sorted. And after a final briefing from marketing manager Cassie Houghton, everyone is ready for the show to begin. With the staff getting into the spirit, the check-in hall is soon brimming and business is brisk. We've had a really good turnout so far. Just want to keep the momentum going throughout the day. Airport Chief Executive John Horn has arrived and is working the stands. Yeah. You're having a good morning? Yeah, it's been busy. Yeah. Really? There are lots and lots of places you can go to that nobody thought you could. And it's about uncovering those. You can either get a coach out, local pick up from here, or you can fly out as well. People we don't want people getting coaches. I know, probably don't. It's a swear word here, isn't it? Yeah. No coach. And there are people also coming in and seeing the changes that are happening to the airport. And that's really important as well, because, you know, by the spring, it's going to be a different place. After a busy morning and nearly a 1,000 visitors, they're hoping the event will translate into even higher passenger numbers. For Cassie, though, it's finally time to start winding down. The day's gone really well. We've been really pleased with the turnout. I'm kind of running on adrenaline and coffee at the moment, so, yeah, can't wait to sit down, put my feet up and, um, yeah, relax. Next time at the airport, a major runway incident leaves the airport closed for nearly two hours. It could be a brake problem, it could be an engine problem. From Barcelona to Cardiff and back again, how the ground crew have just 25 minutes to turn the flight around. I need to get on to stand now because time's going to start ticking. And there's car park chaos as wrongly parked vehicles threaten to delay vital improvement works. We've got to get cracking this work today so we can't afford a hold-up, really.